Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this iMac late 2009 and how well it holds up in 2017. This particular iMac has a 21 and a half inch screen with a resolution of 1080p HD. It also has an Intel Core 2 Duo processor running at 3.06 gigahertz in addition to 8 gigabytes of RAM. This computer supports up to 4 RAM sticks, the type that you would use within a laptop. In my previous video of the 2016 review of this machine, I only had 4 gigs of RAM, which was two 2 gigabyte sticks. But I have since found some extra sticks laying around and have inserted them into this machine and now it has 8 gigabytes of RAM using four 2 gigabyte sticks. Now I've heard rumors that this machine can support up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, however I believe Apple only supports up to 16 technically. But you can go ahead and try out 32 gigs, I don't know if it works or not. Anyway, off of that topic, it also has an NVIDIA GeForce 9400M graphics processor with 256 megabytes of shared memory with the computer. In addition to a 500 gigabyte spinning hard drive, and Mac OS 10.12 Sierra. So, at this time, let's go ahead and take a little look around the machine itself. Starting at the top of the machine, we will find our built-in microphone, in addition to our standard definition EyeSight camera. On the right-hand side of the machine, we will find our super drive, in addition to an SD card slot. On the opposite side, there's nothing. At the back of the machine, at the top, you'll find a ventilation slot, Moving down from that, we see the Apple logo, which is actually used for letting Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals through the aluminum enclosure. In the bottom left-hand corner, we will find our I.O. ports, and in the bottom right-hand corner, we will find our power button. For ports, we will find audio out and in, four USB 2.0 ports, one FireWire 800, one mini display, and Ethernet. Underneath the stand, we will find a hole for ventilation, our power jack, in addition to a Kensington lock port. At the bottom of the machine, we will find ventilation, in addition to our stereo speakers, and a access door in the center for our four RAM sticks. Now that we've taken a look around the outside of the machine, let's go ahead and turn it on and see how well it performs. Here we go. For operating this computer, I will be using the Apple Bluetooth keyboard, which this machine would have originally came with, in addition to the first generation Magic Mouse, the one that actually takes two AA batteries versus having to plug it in upside down and making it absolutely useless uh, when you need to use your machine, so whatever that idea was. Another thing to note with these machines is that some of them have screen problems. This one in particular actually does, and you can maybe tell on camera, the bottom half of the screen has a yellow tint to it. I know that the late 2009 models have that. I do not know if any of the other models of this design also have that problem or not. I haven't done too deep of research into that, but I do know that these late 2009 models do have that issue. But once you're booted up into the operating system, you don't really notice the... Uh, color difference in the screen other than when you're actually booting up and you have a completely white screen. Okay, so we're here at the macOS Sierra start screen and you can see that we are searching for Wi-Fi. It seems like this computer takes forever to do that. I don't know why, I don't know if it's a little bug, but eventually it finds it. So let's go ahead and take a look at about this Mac. Here we can see that we are running macOS Sierra 10.12.5 and the other information that we have previously stated. We can see the display and the graphics card, our storage of the 500 gigabyte hard drive, our four two gigabyte sticks to equal our eight gigs, support and of course services there at the end as well. One thing that I do find annoying with this machine is this pop-up that just came up. It says the keyboard batteries are very low. It's been saying that for the past five months. And the keyboard batteries, it starts doing this when they get around 50%. And I don't know, it just gets quite annoying. I'll have to look at how to disable those notifications. But if you do want to look at it, 
it says that they're at 7%. Now, granted, it's been doing that for a couple months now, and uh, it should be doing it when it gets this low, but not when it's at about 50%. You can also see the mouse's battery level as well up here at the top. So let's go ahead and take a look at Safari here. This is the up-to-date version of Safari, of course. Go ahead and go to one of the lighting sites. And see, here it is again. It pops up. Your batteries are very low. I know that. Can you just leave me alone? So you can see it loaded decently fast. We'll go ahead and load something else. Let's go to YouTube, for example. I'm not going to play a YouTube video because YouTube plays on this machine absolutely fine. There's no lag at all. Uh, it'll stream at 720p by default, at least with my internet connection. Of course, that all depends on how fast your internet is, is how well it'll stream. But I have not had a problem with this machine, and YouTube works absolutely fine in addition to Netflix and any other streaming service. So you can see we can scroll up and down here just fine. Go ahead and quit Safari now. Firefox and Chrome are both up to date in addition to Opera if you like that browser as well. Of course iTunes is up to date in addition to Office 2016. You can go ahead and open Word here so you have a little idea on how long it takes to load. It does take quite a while, but we are on a spinning hard drive. And there's all your templates you can choose from. You can click on a blank document and you can start typing. Now if Word or Office 2016 is not your thing, you can also use Office 2011 and Office 2008 if you like those versions better. In addition to many other applications that have been put on here, this machine actually sits on my desk here along with my other iMac and uh, it gets used by everybody in the house for homework or other needs. So there's all kinds of stuff on here and with it being used quite frequently it hasn't slowed down or anything over the past year of its use as the, I'd say pretty much the whole home computer. We use this machine for just about anything. You may also notice down here the VMware Horizon client, which allows you to connect to servers. We use this to connect to our university server and use any programs that they may have that we cannot uh, buy or install here. And it works very well. You just sign in and connect to the university and there's no lag between that at all unless you're trying to load a very big application, but that's on the university end rather than on this machine's end. But anyway, you can see a whole bunch of different applications will run on here. Photoshop CS5 and the addition to the all the other uh, creative suite applications. Of course, we only have Photoshop on here for some reason. Final Cut Pro also will function, of, of course. So all of these applications are up to date, except for, of course, uh, Office 2008 and 2011 as those are not supported anymore, but they do function just fine. So this machine can do a lot, and I would definitely recommend it here in 2017, although not knowing what the next version of Mac OS will be, and not knowing if it'll work on this machine is might be a deal breaker for some people if they want to use this as their main machine. Although there is no worry if it isn't supported in the next version, as Apple does support a couple versions back for a little while at least with security updates and other essentials. But overall, this machine and its upgrade from 4 gigs of RAM to 8 has breathed a lot of new life into this computer and sets it up for any task that has been thrown at it. So altogether, I would definitely recommend this machine. It works very well. So let's go ahead and shut it down. You can see how fast it turns off, which is quite fast. In the end, I really do hope you enjoyed this video of the iMac late 2009 in 2017. 
Also, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.